Welcome to Explore York Libraries and Archives. This film has been created by community groups in York to help you identify, manage and use your community archive. In this film, we're going to look at how you can start managing your archive, what you should be keeping and how to create a catalogue for your collection. We know that lots of different community groups have got archives stored right across different community spaces. So here are some top tips to get you started on managing your community archive. First of all, choose a group of you to work together. This is going to be really helpful to keep momentum going and you can also share your different skills and experiences as you will all have something different to offer to the process. Next, you need to find your collection. If your collection is spread across lots of different locations, you need to find one place where you can bring it all together and process it as a group. It's really great if you could use a community hall or if somebody is feeling particularly generous, they could lend their spare bedroom or their living room. Next, think about what is your collecting policy. So what is really important and valuable about your community archive that means you want to collect it for the future? Remember, having too much information can be just as unusable as having too little. Once you have all your collection in one place, you need to think about creating a box list. So listing individual items systematically box by box. This will give you a feel for what you have overall and be able to make some important decisions around your material. Finally, you need to decide what you should keep and what you should throw away. Really bear in mind that just because something is old does not mean that it needs to be kept forever as part of an archive. So we're now going to look at a few different types of records to see whether you should keep or not keep them as part of your archive collection as you're working through and processing it. So for each of the answers, if you could hold up a tick or a cross, we'll be able to have a discussion about each one. So first of all, would we keep minutes of meetings? Yes, this is a core record as part of your archive collection. We would always accept minutes into our archive collections because they show exactly what decisions you have taken as an organisation and you'll be able to use them to help you inform future decisions as well. Right, next one. Photocopies of items that you hold the original in your archive collection. <coughs> Generally speaking, as part of our archive collections, we don't tend to keep photocopies. Photocopies take up a lot of space in your archive collection, so you don't really want to be keeping these types of records. What about if there's something in my collection that is fragile? Wouldn't it be better to keep a copy for preserving it? Yes, a photocopy would be a good idea, but what we would suggest is that you keep a digital copy instead. You'll get a better quality that way and it won't take up too much space as part of your physical archive collection. What about low-level financial information, such as receipts and invoices? Generally speaking, we wouldn't keep low-level financial information as part of an archive collection. It can take up a lot of space and actually won't give you an overview of what your financial activities are. We would recommend that you keep things such as your annual balance sheets and other higher level financial information, so that will help you uh, manage your records in the future. Um, do think about though, you will need to keep some financial information for seven years for auditing purposes, so keep hold of things in the short term, but then you can think about getting rid of them in the long term as well. What happens if we don't have any higher level information? If you don't have any higher level information, you can think about keeping what you have if there's only a small amount of it, or if you've got a lot, you can do sampling, which means you can take a few records over a number of years to really reduce the amount of space and it'll still give you an overview of what your financial activities are. And how about keeping multiple copies of identical items?
Well, this is a little bit of a trick one because actually as part of our own archive collections we would keep three identical copies of the same item. That's mainly for preservation purposes. If you've got the luxury of having three identical items, why not keep it? Any more and it becomes a little bit too bulky for your archive collections. But if you have three, it's great for if you want to do any exhibitions and displays, especially if it's a particularly visual item such as publicity or photographs. Well, this activity has shown us that there really are no right and wrong answers to think about when you're, you're managing your community archive. You really are the best people to know about what is important to your community group and for your community archive. Is there anything to be aware of when you're disposing of documents? Yes, there are a couple of really important things to think about when disposing of documents. First of all, if you're getting rid of any financial or personal information, make sure that you shred that material, get it confidentially shredded. That's very important. You also need to bear in mind the Data Protection Act. Any personal information that you have in your archive that is less than 100 years old will need to be closed to the public. There is further information available on this, so you'll need to bear in mind and make sure you know the rules when you're processing your archive. So now you have a list of what you have in your collection. Now you need to think about how you arrange it. Archives are traditionally arranged in a hierarchy. So if you think about the files on your computer and how you have folders within folders until you eventually get to the items, that is exactly how archives work as well. For example, you start with the entire name of your collection and then you work downwards, almost like a tree. You need to think about the different types of records you have in your collection. For example, you might have minutes of meetings, financial records, and publicity as your headings. Then beneath that, you may have individual minute books, individual financial records, or different types of publicity. You may find that one section in itself needs to be subdivided into different types of records. So publicity is a great example of this. So you may have photographs and press cuttings as two different separate sections. Then beneath that, you can list all the individual items. It gives you a really good overview of what you have in your collection and hopefully it will mean people can navigate it much easier. Under each section, make sure that items are listed in date order, starting with the earliest. Why can't I start with the most recent document and then work backwards? If you work backwards, then it means that as your collection continues to grow, you're probably going to have to renumber everything. So if you have everything in date order, you can start with the earliest and then as you add an extra minute book, for example, or extra photographs, you can continue adding them to the end of your structure and add them to the reference numbers you've already created. It just means that instead of having an archive collection, you've got a much more living archive, so your archive can grow and change with your community group. The best way to understand how hierarchical cataloguing works is to have a go. So on the table in front of you, you have a box. So now is your chance to have a go at arranging items to create a hierarchical catalogue. This is really the best way of getting stuck in and this is something you can apply to your own community archive at the end of this workshop. Right, let's have a look, shall we? So it's the Boy Scouts Association, York. We have a look and see what's in the Oh, Boy Scouts Headquarters Gazette. Oh, there's a, there are letters. Oh, what's that? Oh, 
Summer Camp Logbook, 1954. What should we do with logbooks? What about all these photographs? There are, there are lots of them here, look. So we've got accounts, we've got minutes. Now we've got correspondence, yes. that's all these letters here. Yes. Events, events. Yeah, under events, we've got a subcategory which is the photographs. Yes. Because they're photographs yeah. of an event, aren't they? Yeah. 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 And what about the publicity? That's maybe that ads in there as well. Yeah. Events so, as well? Is this um, should we have publicity separate? Okay. Because yeah. it's things that have been written about. Yeah. yeah. We we'll just leave the log books. books. Um, I'd separate or under events. Under events, because they yeah, were an event. Sure. That's right. They have to be a record of it. Yeah. So we could have it like that. So mm. is that okay? So we seem to be ending up with about five sections, don't we? Um, finance, yep. and then correspondence, so we've got some letters. Perhaps we could put these um, bits of publicity in with the other parts of publicity. The the yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we've got, we've got publicity mm. and photographs as a subsection. Yeah. Does that sound all right? Yeah. 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 And then um, the log books. We've got the minutes, don't forget. Oh, the minutes. yes, the minutes. Yeah. It's a fine selection. It seems good, doesn't it? That's yeah. It's amazing what they've managed to connect. Yep. Well, you've both come up with really good structures. And interestingly, you've both chosen to put your photographs in different places. And as you can see, there is actually no right or wrong answer when creating an archive structure. It's all about making your collection usable to your audience and that makes sense to your own community as well. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to creating a catalogue and managing your community archive, but getting a handle on what you have and bringing it all together in one place is a fantastic way to start. But remember that there's no point in keeping an archive if it's not accessible to everybody. So really, making a start on managing your community archive is important for you and for your entire community. <laughs>